Coming up, Croydon in crisis. The government takes charge of children's protection services after failures by the council. Now the ITV News in London with Nina Hussain. Good evening, welcome to the ITV News in London tonight. A crisis at Croydon's children's services. The government steps in to protect those at risk of harm. I think the council's leadership has failed and their leader, Councillor Tony Newman, should resign. McStrike at McDonald's, why workers in South London are walking out for the first time. And the little girl who died waiting for a new heart but saved the life of another. We start tonight with the news that a council is failing vulnerable children in its care so badly the government has sent in an advisor to take over. The council in question is Croydon. An Ofsted inspection ruled its children's social care services are inadequate, concluding it doesn't understand children and doesn't look after them, leaving some at risk of significant harm. Our political correspondent Simon Harris has the details. Child protection is one of the most important responsibilities of any London borough, but in Croydon, the Labour-run council systematically failed youngsters in its care. That was the verdict of ministers today after a damning report from Ofsted inspectors who concluded there are widespread and serious failures in the services provided to children and their families in Croydon that leave some children at risk of significant harm. When children are missing or at risk of sexual exploitation, poor recognition and response to these concerns is not reducing risk to them effectively. I apologise um, wholeheartedly um, because ultimately they are our most vulnerable um, cohort within the borough and they are the people who, for me as lead member, I have a responsibility as the corporate parent to make sure receive the best um, service possible for them. During Ofsted's inspection in June, 1,789 youngsters in Croydon were in need of children's services. They included 399 thought to be so at risk they were subject to a child protection plan. In the last five years, the council conducted serious case reviews after five children died. Today, the government appointed Eleanor Brazil, a veteran social services troubleshooter, to take control of children's services in the role of commissioner. The fact the government has had to step in and appoint a commissioner to, uh, with powers to direct children's services in Croydon shows how serious this is. Uh, I think the council's leadership has failed and their leader, Councillor Tony Newman, should resign. Tonight, Croydon Council said it accepted the findings of the Ofsted report and would make the necessary changes to deliver better services for children. Look, a terrible catalogue of failings has been revealed. What happens now? Well, Eleanor Brazil, the children, the commissioner put in charge of children's services, is effectively calling the shots. The council has to do what she says. And she's well qualified. She was the person who went in to sort out Haringey Council in North London after the dreadful baby pee scandal. You remember the death of Peter Connolly in 2007. He died from abuse and neglect. Uh, her first job is to carry out a three-month review of what went wrong at Croydon. Ofsted identified several flaws poor manage, weak management, poor decision making, uh, too many, too many uh, staff leaving and uh, social workers too slow and the council too slow to respond to problems. Sometimes when children went missing they weren't even questioned when they returned. And Eleanor Brazil will stay in place until the Secretary of State is satisfied that the improvements have been made. All right Simon, thank you very much. Thank you. Staff at a McDonald's store in South East London walked out this morning as part of the first strike in this country at the fast food chain. Workers in Crayford were on the picket line from midnight over their pay and working conditions. They represent a very small minority of McDonald's staff in the capital, but they were determined to make their voices heard. Luke Hanrahan has more. They walked out at midnight and stayed up all night. 
Staff from the McDonald's Crayford branch protesting against low pay and the company's use of zero-hour contracts. It's up to them how much hours they give us. That was part of one of the grievances I had because they cut me down to four hours a week. I've got a child to look after. Workers at McDonald's are employed to do this, but some of them only do it for a few hours a week on the minimum wage and say they find it almost impossible to make ends meet. So I'm Shen Batmaz, 22 years old. I've worked for McDonald's for over a year and I'm on £7.20 an hour. People can't even put food on the table. Uh, we can't even afford the food we sell and that's insane to me that that's possible. I'm Lewis Baker. I've worked for McDonald's for five years. I'm 27 and I earn 7 85 an hour. I'm here today because this is the only way that we've got McDonald's to listen to us. Other than that, they haven't cared about what we've been telling them. The strikers came up to Parliament to challenge multi-billion dollar McDonald's to pay them more, calling for a wage of at least £10 an hour and more secure working hours. They're not surviving on these wages, they've got a large range of grievances. Isn't it the best thing to do with McDonald's to sit down, recognise the union, get proper negotiations going? McDonald's says the number of people striking here today represents a tiny minority of the people it employs across the capital. It has 180 restaurants and 15,500 staff. In a statement, McDonald's said McDonald's UK and its franchisees have delivered three pay rises since April 2016. This has increased the average hourly pay rate by 15%. We're proud of our people at McDonald's. They're at the heart of all we do and we work hard to ensure that our teams are treated fairly. McDonald's also says by the end of the year, all staff will be offered the option of a guaranteed hours contract in place of zero hours contracts. Luke Hanrahan, ITV News. The Met Police is using so-called spit hoods on a disproportionate number of black detainees, according to figures obtained by the London Assembly member, Sean Berry. The Met used hoods like these in 53 arrests during a three-month trial. 23% of the male detainees they were used on were black, while the figure for women was even higher at 72%. By contrast, black people make up just 14% of London's population. The Met said in all cases the hoods were necessary to protect officers, but their use is controversial. The public inquiry into the Grenfell Tower fire will open next week, but ITV News understands that when it does, the full panel will not be in place. One family who already has concerns about the panel has written to the Prime Minister saying she might be in breach of equality laws if it doesn't reflect both the racial and religious diversity of those who died. Rags Martel has the details. Hisham Rahman knew he was going to die. He lived on the 23rd floor of Grenfell Tower and couldn't use the stairs. But as the fire reached the top floor, he spent his final moments comforting his neighbour's children. I'm holding on to that more than anything else, you know, that his last moments was of acts of, you know, heroism, you know, he was comforting young kids, trying to, you know, reassure people and, and calm them down in a state of terror and panic. He was not only my uncle, he was like a father to me because I, I grew up without, without my father and he was, he was that father figure to me. For Hisham's surviving family, hopes for justice now rest with the public inquiry. I don't want the tower to just be, you know, a symbol of how things can go horribly wrong when people don't listen and care. And I don't want it to be forgotten like everybody else, you know. My uncle was murdered, you know, he should not have died that night. The family's lawyers have now written to the Prime Minister urging her that the inquiry must have an ethnically and religiously diverse panel who have the relevant expertise to assist the chair and ensure public trust and confidence in the inquiry. The Grenville Inquiry will open in this building a week on Thursday. The panel is still being finalised and they are considering a wide range of specialists. But ITV News understands they won't all be appointed by the time the inquiry opens. We need to be confident in this public inquiry and at the moment we're not. And it seems that everything that keeps happening it sort of gives us a reason to not be confident. A spokesperson for the government said they'd received the letter from Hisham's family and will respond in due course. Rags Martel, ITV News.
A little girl from Essex who died waiting for a heart transplant then became an organ donor herself, saving the life of a young man. Aoife O'Sullivan was four and a half when she died. Her parents decided her kidneys could be donated. Across London, almost 1,300 people are currently waiting for a transplant. Ronke Phillips reports. What have you made? Biscuit. Aoife O'Sullivan was a happy and healthy child until she developed a cough just before her fourth birthday. Doctors first told her parents she had chronic asthma, but tests soon revealed Aoife actually had a rare, undetected, life-threatening heart condition. We were told that it was incurable and there was the only way she'd be able to survive was if she had a heart transplant. It was awful. I remember just praying, like, can you just fix her heart? Because I don't, I don't want anyone else's heart because that means another child has died. I don't want another heart. I want Aoife's heart to be fixed. While she waited for an organ, Aoife's condition worsened. She underwent emergency surgery to have a mechanical heart support fitted, but died a short time later. Despite all they'd been through, her parents decided to donate Aoife's kidneys. I don't think it was brave. It was just the right thing to do. And um, it's, it's the, yeah, it's just the right thing to do. We were willing to accept a donor, an organ donor, and so it was only right for us to like, donate what we could. Every year, hundreds of people die unnecessarily because of a shortage of organs. There's a campaign for a universal introduction of the system, which is still being trialled, where adults are regarded as having consented to donation unless they've opted out. But for others, the answer is less complicated. If you support donation, don't wait for a change in legislation. Tell your family that you want to be a donor, sign the register and save lives today. There wasn't a heart for Ether, but she was able to give the gift of life to a young man who'd also been desperately waiting for a transplant. Her parents hope by sharing their story, people will realise how important it is to donate. Ronke Phillips, ITV News. And you'll find more information about organ donation on our website. Finally, we've all dealt with the odd spider or moth at home, but that's nothing compared to what one family in South End found in the bathroom. A three-foot python came out of the toilet in Laura Cowell's house, discovered by her very shocked five-year-old. Luckily, it was harmless and was soon removed after a call to the local pet shop called Scales and Fangs. Resident at Kensington Palace next year, the Duchess of Cambridge is expecting her third child. There'll be more on that and the rest of the day's news in just a moment. But from the London team, for now, bye-bye. Purity's Allergy Tablets sponsor the London weekday weather. Hello again. It's been a pretty dull day, hasn't it? Damp and slightly muggy and more of the same really tomorrow ahead of a cold front bringing some more patchy rain. Once that's cleared away though through tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday and Thursday drier, fresher with some welcome sunshine before slightly more unsettled on Friday as low pressure worked its way in as some showery rain pushing its way down towards the London area through Friday afternoon and increasingly windy as well. Out there this evening and tonight, well, one or two patchy bits of rain. The cloud rolling its way back in, quite low, though not as thick as it was last night, so we shouldn't see a repeat of the mist and fog. The main story really is it is going to be a really quite muggy and close night, no lower than 17 degrees overnight in the city centre. Tomorrow morning, a dull start and patchy outbreaks of rain, much like this morning. The cloud breaking slightly into the afternoon to bring one or two slightly brighter breaks. Always a risk of some outbreaks of rain and the breeze picking up as well. That'll clear away some of the humidity, so it's going to feel a little fresher tomorrow and a degree or two down on what we've seen today. Then we look further ahead through the evening and you see those showers clearing away. Then into Wednesday and Thursday, drier, brighter, with some nice sunny spells. Goodbye. The London weekday weather, sponsored by the Piri Range.